Okay, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I'm sorry we didn't order a better night for you. I tried, I really did, but I don't have any say. So we were thankful that yesterday we got all that rain, mainly because we had just got done transplanting a whole bunch of plants at the library. So we were glad it rained harder. So everybody, now you have the important one right here. This is your very important one. Don't lose it, because we're going to do something with it. And you have your pot. Now tonight we're going to talk about container gardening. And I will get my Vanna once he's done. He can hand out one of these. <laughs> Mr. Vanna. <laughs> Manna. Okay, there he goes. <laughs> all right, so why do container gardening? I'm sure you guys are probably all got your own reasons. And my biggest thing is, is you know, as you get older and you start having health issues, I'm sure none of you have. You get to the point where you, it's harder and harder to bend down and weed and the thought of going out and hoeing and rototilling and shoveling and weeding. And did I mention, oh yeah, weeding? We always have that issue. Container gardening is a way that we can do it without all that hassle. Because it's a matter of we can grow vegetables, we can grow herbs, and we can grow flowers in these. So tonight you're going to be growing flowers. So one thing you want to think of when you're doing these, and we will come to this, I promise, is when you're doing an arrangement, you want to, well looky there, I'm the first slob of the night. Yay me! <laughs> when you're doing a container, you want to think of something right up the center. You, we call it the thriller. So we have to have a thriller, and then we have to have spillers that kind of go down the sides, and then we have fillers. And I know you guys have all seen them that look like that on that paper. They look gorgeous, don't they? Yeah. But you know, when you get those, my mom just got one for Mother's Day for my brother, which was very nice. But when I was counting, it had four plants. Now we're talking a pot this big around. Not very big, is it? She had four impatient plants in there that were all this tall. There's a tall spike in the center, so that's what, five plants? Then there was four more ivies coming down the sides, all in this little pot like this, and she's going, why isn't it holding water? <laughs> Maybe because it's root bound. Yeah. And a lot of those that really look nice right now at the greenhouse, that's the whole problem, is they've got a little bit too much, too many plants in there. So you want to, when you start out, don't overdo it when you do a container. So this one, we, you know, in the past we've always done, we've done vegetables, We've done herbs, so I thought this year let's do flowers to mix it up. So I think Vanna here could probably start handing out, they each get one of these, one of these, and one of those. So if you want to just take one at a time around. Okay, yep, I'm going to grab this so it doesn't blow away. Actually, I'm going to set that. A little bit of technical difficulty, that's all right. Okay, so what everybody should have is you should have a pot, you got some paperwork, you got a bag of, well, right now it's dirt, okay? Technically, it's called soil, but does anybody know the difference between soil and dirt? Okay, you ready for this? This is really technical too. Dirt is soil that's where you don't want it. Soil is where you want it. So right now this is dirt, but once we put it in here, it becomes soil. So it's, it's where we want it now. You know, the stuff we sweep off our kitchen floor, that's dirt. So when I was filling these containers, I had dirt on the floor that came out of a soil bag. Okay, 
So we have the thrillers, fillers, and fillers. So everybody's getting their plants here. Now we need to talk about, you want to consider where you're going to put your containers. With these plants, if you notice the little tags, I can read you the one for the snapdragons. So the tall one that you have is a snapdragon. This is, they're both annuals, by the way. The violas will reseed themselves. So next year, wherever you have these setting, you'll probably have little ones come up because they will reseed. Just dig them up, put them in a pot. There you go. They're a lot like dirt. But they're a weed until you put them in a pot and then they become a flower. Okay? So these like full sun, these are going to get 6 to 10 inches tall. This is the snapdragon. They're yellow, just so you know. And they do like full sun. This is, a, it says here, sun to partial shade. So when you're going to buy plants or seeds or whatever, read the packaging before you decide to put them in containers. That way you know. So we have full sun on that. And do we have one for the vi violas? Right here. Okay, this is the same way. This is going to be short. It'll get about maybe this high or so. It might get a little bit higher. Four to six inches. And this also likes full sun or partial shade. So when you're deciding on what you want to plant, think of your yard and where you're going to put it. Because containers you can put on your patio. You can put it in your driveway if you wanted to. Um, you can put it out in an existing garden. You can put it just about anywhere that the conditions are right for the plants. And you always want to take that in consideration. When you go to a garden center to buy a container, look for the tag that's in there because it will tell you whether it wants to have shade or whether it wants to have sun. And go by that because they will tell you. You know that, and if you don't know, ask somebody at the garden center because they should know also. If they're worth their grain and salt, they should know. They should be able to tell you. Okay, so the containers, as you notice with these, now the most important thing when you're looking for a container to use, it has to have a hole in the bottom. These ones didn't. But thanks to a drill press, and drill bits, you have holes in the bottom. That's where this important piece comes in. This goes over that hole. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do with that. That will go right over that hole and basically its purpose is to keep the soil from falling out the bottom. Not saying it will, but some of it will come out this way when you use something like that. Sometimes you can use like rocks. Sometimes you can use a broken pot. Thank you. Yep. Then I'll get Vanna on the soil and yep, we got them. oh and their other thing yep. right here. These. Okay. So this goes over there, but when you're looking at containers, you, there are some things you want to take into consideration. The size of the plants that you're going to put in there on the size of the pot you're going to use. You know, these ones can go into this. Uh, very easily, three of them will go in here. I wouldn't want to take, you know, like a three or four inch pot of plants and try to stick them in this because it's not going to work. Plants actually only need six inches of soil to grow. You square foot whether gardening, whether you do raised beds, whether you do container gardening. So how many in here have got great big giant pots? You know the ones that are about this big around. They stand this tall and you have to bowl them around. Do you want to know a secret to stop the heaviness of that? Right here, I'm going to show you. Say this is my great big giant urn that I want to have out in my yard, and it's heavy and I don't want to be moving it all the time. 
but I bought this plant that came in this pot that'll kind of, that's a little bit, kind of a little bit smaller. You set your urn down, you take this, turn it upside down, put it in there as filler. Because, and you can also use water bottles, milk jugs, any of that stuff. Use it as filler. You, like I said, you only need th about this much soil to grow anything. So those big heavy pots and all that, you can eliminate that heaviness. And it won't hurt a thing. And see now like with this one, this has got a watering thing on the bottom. But see it had a hole here. This has also got holes in the bottom. So I don't have to worry about drainage because the water is going to go through there. It might set down there for a while. No big deal. The plant, the plant will find its way to the water, so you're good. Terracotta pots. How many have had the issue with like terracotta pots? You go to plant them up and your soil just gets dry afterwards, just sucked right dry, that it's like the Mojave Desert when you're done playing with it. The secret to that is, is take a bucket put some water in it, and while you're trying to get all the other stuff ready to plant up, dip that terracotta pot into that water and let it soak for about 10 minutes. That way it's soaked all, it's wicked all the moisture it's going to for a while, and then it won't dry your soil out. Because that's what's happening is once you put that soil in there, it's going, ooh, I'm thirsty, and sucks all that liquid right out of the soil. So that's a little secret on that. So you can use anything that you can either put a hole in or has a hole in for drainage. Because you have to have drainage to grow good plants. Now the soil. Don't go cheap on the soil, whatever you do, because you get what you pay for. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think. Somebody was telling me about doing a container and they thought that the soil they used might have been compost. It was a lady at the store, as a matter of fact. And she had bought it by mistake. She thought it was potting soil and she says it just was really heavy. And she says, I think I bought compost. Well, you guys know what compost is, don't you? <laughs> so when you buy soil, make sure you get a good quality potting mix. And a lot of times it will have in here, um, this one feeds up to six months and it might have more blooms because they do, they have a tendency to put little bits of Osmocote in there, which is a slow release fertilizer. I don't know if I can get the lid off this. And what it looks like, and I'll pass this around tonight too, because you're going to put some around your plants. Sure. It's a slow release fertilizer and you just, once you planted your plants up, you sprinkle it around the plants and it will slow release. Um, the other thing I want to say on that is when you buy plants, do not buy the fertilizer spikes. How many in here bought those? Good. Glad to hear it. Those fertilizer spikes, they're good in theory. But the only problem is, is when you stick them in around your plant, that's the only place that fertilizer is going to go. As it dissolves, it's going to release fertilizer, but it's going to go to that side of the plant. So you want to make sure that get something like this. This is an all-purpose fertilizer. So you can use that. Um, with bigger containers that you have, the big ones, it's a good idea to do a little bit of mulch on the top of those. Even if you get them from the greenhouse, put a little Osmocote around that stuff, then put a thin layer of mulch that holds the moisture in. It, anything we can do to help keep that moisture in the soil, the better your plants will be. <coughs> They'll be happier. They'll thank you in the end. Let's see what else, watering. How many people in here have overwatered a plant? I'll admit it, I'm a master gardener and I've done it. My true confessions is, is I've also killed plants. Sorry. Even though 
I say I'm a master at it. I'm a master at killing too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes I know how to bring them back to life and sometimes they're just a lost cause. You know, the poinsettias. So watering, the best way to test is, say this is my pot and I'm, I want to check and see if I need to water. This is your best friend. Stick your finger in probably up to the first knuckle. See how I've got dirt on there? If it comes back with dirt on it, it should be good for a couple more days. If it comes back and you stick your finger in there and it's bone dry, I think it's thirsty. If it comes back really muddy, don't water for several days <laughs> because that means it's gotten way too much water. Uh, fertilizer, we kind of talked about the Osmocote. The other thing you can do, I had the privilege of working in a greenhouse, so I know some of the, their little secrets. The hanging baskets or containers, a lot of times, the one that I worked at, we would give everybody a little packet of the Osmocote like that. We'd tell them when you get it home, sprinkle that in around the plant, and then at least once a week, do a watered down version of the plant food and water your plant with that. And your plants will stay happier, happier and healthier. So, it, and it does work. Why not? Yep. You could very easily do it with any plant. Put a little bit of this around it. And then, you know, take, take, and I would still use with plant food, I would go with a miracle Grow. Don't go with an off-brand. Go with the name brand. Because, you know, they've been around forever. So you know that they're worth it. Follow the directions on the package to water it. Uh, when selecting plants, now you notice that some of these were in bloom and some are not. What I do when I go to the greenhouse to find plants that I want to put in, I always look for the smallest plants and the ones that don't have any flowers on them yet. I'm going to take their word at the tag of what color my petunia might be because I want the ones that aren't going to be stressed when they're transplanted. Because a lot of times plants will get a little bit stressed, just like we would if somebody was to up and move us. We're going to go, I don't know if I want to be there or not. So you want to make sure, you know, you pick a nice, small, hearty looking plant. Don't be buying these little wizzly things that go up because they have a nice bloom. Leave that for some of us who are greedy and wait until it's on clearance and we'll pay a dollar for it, you know. <laughs> so, um, and let me see, what else do we need to consider? Seeds when you're buying seeds, because even like with flower seeds, you were talking about sunflowers, trying to grow sunflowers, you were. You know, the packets, just because on the packets it always says uh, selling year of 2019 right now that's out there, that doesn't mean you have to throw it on at the end of the season. They're still good for a good three to five years. The best way to test that to see if they're still viable seeds is what we call it. So you take a damp paper towel, fold it in half, put 10 of your seeds in it, put the top back on it, the other part of the paper towel, stick it in a Ziploc bag, stick it in a south window, and check it and like, if the package says, you know, seven to 10 days germination, in seven days go look at it more than likely you will have, you know, you might have three or four shoots coming out of the seeds. That's not a very good batting average. So you might want to just plant more of them. But a lot of times, you, if you have like nine of them, you know they're good to go. So that would be a springtime thing. Yep, if you were, see, for that year. yeah, but even if you have like seeds that you've bought just recently to plan out or that you've got some left over from last year that like with me we're going to be doing the library the vegetables the seeds that I bought we have square foot gardens up there 
I'm going to use last year's seeds because I know they're still good. You know, so I can just, if I want to, if I've got some, and Lord knows I do, old ones that I've had for several years, I can test that theory to see, are those bean seeds still good? And I can try it, and when it's germination time, they'll come up. I have two tomato plants from doing sowing seeds indoors that we did that were the test seeds that I tried for the class to show them how to do it. And on of, on of them, I get, you know, there was two that looked good and I went, well, we'll stick them in pots, see what we can do with them. They're this tall. You know, they'll be, they'll be nice down there. So with that being said, what we're gonna do, everybody's got their little coffee filter in there. Is everybody ready for this? Okay. Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit on this too. This is, if you have a large container that you're going to be doing, this is called soil moist. It has to do with watering. What these do, and I will pass around these two bags, this is what it looks like when it's dry. And it just looks like little, like crystal beads, whatever. This is the same amount as this, only with a half a cup of water in there. And what it does is they swell up. And it's just like a gel, and it's moisture. And you can buy this stuff. They used to sell it at Walmarts. I haven't looked lately. But you mix it in with your potting soil. You plant it up, water it in, and these little beads will absorb some of the water. And they're nice if you're going to only be you know, like if you're one that goes up north every weekend during the summertime, then you can water them in on Friday. You know you're good for the weekend, that you don't have to worry about it. Somebody had said that you could use, I know this one's funny, but like a, a diaper, that they have the same little water piece in those. Yep, I've heard that too. And I, I have heard of some of the master gardeners who have actually cut them up into little pieces and put them in their hanging baskets when they did them. That it only makes sense with a baby diaper, you know, that water goes in there, that if you fill it up, the plant roots are going to find its way to the moisture. You know, so. Okay, so everybody has their, what is this now? Right now, dirt. dirt. Now we're going to put it in our container, and trust me, I know you got enough, because I measured all of them. Okay. So now it's soil. Isn't that amazing? And look, I didn't get any plants. None for me. Nope, not for you. None for me. Nope. I need one of that one too. Okay, the other thing, if you guys, when you go to get your plants, have a hard time getting the plants out of their little containers, stick your thumb up in there, and then it usually pops them right out. So it makes it easier. So I need one of those, one of those, and one of those. Look at, doesn't he make a good manna? All right. So now that we got these out, let me see the roots of everybody's. Do they look like this? Now what's going to happen if I just dig a hole and stick those in there just like that? Can anybody tell me? It's not going to grow because the, what the roots are doing is they're growing around and around and around because that's the only place they've got to go. So when you get them, you do a little bit of a tear like that and that's going to loosen up their little, their little roots there. And then when you plant them, you're only going to plant them up to the bottom of where the plant comes out of the ground, right there. Don't go way up and don't go down too far. So then you just kind of tuck the soil in. This is going to be the same way. And like this one, if you guys look at your snapdragons, this is a good example of all those roots just going around and around in that pot. They don't know where they're going. 
That's a good idea to do with any trees, any kind of plants you buy. And then we're just going to tuck them in like this. Get another hole right in there. They like to have, as I tell little kids, they like to have their toes tickled. So that's tickling their toes. And then you just stick them in there, put some soil around them. after I get a drink. Okay, so everybody should look like this. Aren't they gorgeous? All right, so where are we gonna plant, where are we gonna set these? South side. Yep, probably a south side. They both like full sun or partial shade. So you wanna look at where you're at at home, where you've got a, a nice place outside to plant them. And just so you guys know, these ones have been out in this kind of weather. Okay. So now like tonight where they're talking about a possible frost, or they were yesterday, what I would do is I would take like a sheet or a pillowcase or something and lay over top of them outside or take them in the house. And that'll, that'll keep it from getting frozen because if these get frosted, because they're an annual, they're going to, sorry, we'd have to have plant funerals then. So all these will come back next year? Possibly this, well, actually, a snapdragon will recede too. So it's very possible that they might recede right in that pot, or they may not. See, you don't have a brown thumb. You did it. Oh, she's got 10 dirty fingers now. Okay. But why don't you go around with some of that and everybody can kind of sprinkle a little Osmocote around them? You want the bag? No. You want the no, you can keep the bag. Actually, what I would do is if you're going to take this into the house, might as well not waste this. If it will fit on the bottom of that, you could cut the zip lock part off and use it as a watering tray underneath for a while if you're going to have it indoors. Each table has got a water bottle. Which one did you want? This one? Yeah. Yep. And then you're just going to water your plants in good. Give them a little drink. These things, it's called LeeValley.com and they sell them in there and they're called bottle top waterers. Lee, L-E-E, -E, Valley, V-A-L-L-E-Y, dot com. No, I have not found them anywhere else other than on the internet. LeeValley.com. But these other things you get at Walmart? The, this you can get at Walmart. The asthma coat you can get at Walmart. Go out in the patio section and they, they usually have that. What is that? The plants? Or the fertilizer? That I don't know. You shouldn't have an issue with your cats and dogs. Well, I'm not going to say shouldn't. You shouldn't have. We have a cat at my mom's house that she has one of those rail um, planters, you know, that fit onto the rail, that that's the cat's bed. Because she took claim on it when she was a kitten, and we just leave it up, and that's where she sleeps during the summer. So any other questions? If not, I would say that we could probably, look at it, I got that done in a half hour, wow. Well, I didn't want you out in the elements for too long. Thank you. Thank you. So, well, I know some of you guys are not are not warm, quite warm enough. So, so if nobody else has any questions, I guess we're done. I I want to thank you guys for coming. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Hey.